This is the Apache Attack Helicopter. Let's take a look at the interior of this aircraft and how the pilot uses the collective side click and pedals to pilot the helicopter. By raising the collective, the helicopter goes up and lowering the collective, the helicopter drops in altitude. Interestingly, the gunner cockpit is located at the front with all the control systems ready to fire with the press of a button launching its interchangeable racks of weapons depending on the mission. And let's not forget the inner workings of a turbofan engine that helps turns these huge rotors, so stay tuned and don't miss a beat. This is one of the latest versions of the Apache helicopter. The Apache has two separate cockpit stations. The gunner sits at the front while the pilot is stationed here, allowing the gunner the best view of the terrain. While the pilot's station also provides a clear forward view, it's better optimized for flying. The coolest thing is they are connected to this ball, which makes it easier to identify enemy targets. Let's take a look at how this works. This is the integrated night vision and display sight system linked to the pilot's helmet head movement. If he turns right, it turns right. If he turns left, it turns left. For the gunner, there's an independent target acquisition designation sight night vision forward looking camera. Just a reminder, it moves independently from the pilot's display system. While this optic is the day television direct view with laser range finder designator. This is all connected to the weapon system, the 30mm M230 chain gun capable of firing 600 rounds per minute with a range of around 3000 meters. It can deflect up to 86 degrees left and right, 60 degrees down and 11 degrees up, all connected to the pilot's or gunner's helmet. This is advantageous because it allows us to engage targets even if the nose of the helicopter is not pointing at them. Let's delve into how the guns and missiles are fired. Here in the gunner's cockpit, we find stationary controllers at his disposal. On the right side lies the laser enabling the gunner to range and designate targets. All this is skillfully aided by the helmet HUD combiner lens, just as shown in this animations. On the left side rests the trigger, governing the weapon systems. Once a target is locked, he squeezes this trigger button, which engages the chain gun. This formidable weapon boasts a range of 1,500 meters and is designed to annihilate or incapacitate light-armored vehicles, such as the BMP. In short, if he can see it, he can kill it. What about targets more than 15 kilometers away? To target long-range objectives, we utilize the Longbow Fire Control Radar. Distinguished by its mast-mounted antenna, operating as a 35 gigahertz radar system for detection. It resembles a mushroom-shaped device mounted atop the rotor. Equipped with the longbow radar and the HUD helmet package, the pilot is able to multitask across various communication systems, thereby enhancing intelligent decision-making. When it comes to multitasking and staying secure on the go, we've got you covered with our browser that excels in speed, security, and intelligence. Packed with free features like ad and tracker blocking, plus a built-in generative artificial intelligence service called ARIA. Ever wondered where the Apache helicopter got its name? Just type your question and boom, ARIA generates a quick and correct answer in no time. But hold on, there's more. Need to incorporate this into a script? Simply right-click, hit the rephrase button, and voila! Your script is polished and perfected. Let's take a look at how we rewrite our script with a simple step of copy and paste of the text here. Make some adjustments, switch to a presentation style with a touch of informal tone, then press generate for a whole new and improved script. And that's not all. You can turn your script into a dynamic speech with just a few clicks, make it longer, hipper, and happening in an instant. Plus, link your Instagram, Twitter, and music player effortlessly. With just a few clicks, you're off your favorite artists and podcasts. It's completely free and honestly, we recommend it, so just click the link below. Here's how it operates. The Apache can swiftly emerge from behind trees or hills. As the radar sweeps the battlefield in a complete 360 degrees arc, it then retreats into concealment, a tactic known as masking. It can identify and track close to 300 potential targets. Subsequently, it transfers this data to the Hellfire missiles, employing a fire and forget technique. What's more astonishing is how the longbow radar tags and prioritizes each target individually. Once fired, the computer brain within the longbow guides each missile to its designated target separately. The longbow's digital intelligence is so robust that a single Apache can direct the Hellfire attack of an entire squadron of tanks. As mentioned, the Hellfire missile is a fire-and-forget weapon. Once it's launched, the Apache can quickly seek cover behind hills or terrain features, 
allowing the missile to autonomously track and engage its designated target. This capability is crucial for the Apache crew as it enables them to maintain a tactical advantage by minimizing their exposure to enemy fire while still effectively engaging distant targets. Moving to the back are these General Electric T701 engines, referred to as turboshaft engines. Here's a breakdown of how they operate. First, they draw in air through the front as well as turning these huge layers of blades strategically positioned back to back. Subsequently, the air is heated up and then propelled by multiple blades connected to a central shaft. This compressed air causes the rotation of the shaft positioned along the center line of the engine. This design principle is what categorizes it as a turboshaft engine. In this attack helicopter, two turboshaft engines are employed to power the shafts. The engine powers the transmission gear which is connected to the rotors. These blades are what help the helicopter achieve lift. As stated, the helicopter needs a tail rotor blade. This shaft is what helps the flow of power from the engine to the tail rotors. The helicopter generates lift by adjusting the pitch of its blades as shown in the visuals. This adjustment affects the angle of attack of the rotors, resulting in increased lift production. When all four rotor blades spin at high speed, the helicopter ascends. Decreasing the pitch reduces lift, causing the helicopter to descend or accelerate downwards as demonstrated in this animation. Remember, the turboshaft engines rotate these four rotor blades in one direction, inducing torque in the main body of the helicopter, which would cause it to spin uncontrollably if left unchecked. Proper alignment of the tail rotors is crucial. They are tilted at approximately 20 to 23 degrees. Additionally, each of the four tail rotor blades can adjust its pitch, affecting airflow. To turn left, increase the pitch. To turn right, decrease it. Now let's take a look at some of the main parts of flying a helicopter. The collective, the side click, and the tail rotor pedals. The collective moves the helicopter up or down. Pulling the collective adjusts the angle of attack of the blades, thereby increasing lift and causing the helicopter to rise into the air. Moving down on the collective flattens the blade angle of attack, generating less lift and helping the helicopter descend. This side click controller is used to move the helicopter forward, backward, left, or right. Tilting the swash plate by moving the control causes an uneven amount of lift on one side, which then moves the helicopter. This adjustment automatically compensates for gyroscopic precession. All the pilot has to do is move the side click in the direction that the helicopter should go. The tail rotor pedals control the yaw or vertical axis of rotation. Pushing the left pedal increases the tail rotor blade pitch, rotating the helicopter to the left. Pushing on the right pedal and decreasing the pitch rotates the helicopter to the right. In short, you have the collective, which moves the helicopter up or down, the side click, which moves the helicopter forward, backward, or side to side, and then the tail rotor pedals, which rotate the helicopter left or right. This is called an attack helicopter, since it can carry different weapons with 16 Hellfire missiles distributed across four rail launchers. Additionally, if the mission requires, the helicopter can ditch two rails of Hellfire missiles and load these unguided Hydra 70 rockets, which are mainly used for suppression of a large area of an enemy structure. And in some cases, a dual Stinger missile and the famous Sidewinder air-to-air -air weapon system in case there's an enemy fighter jet lurking in the skies. And finally, the 30mm chain gun, which can hold 1,200 rounds for any air or ground assault targets. This helicopter measures approximately 48 feet in length and stands at a height of 15.49 feet. Its rotor diameter mirrors this length, spanning around 48 feet almost equal to the body itself. To grasp its sheer size, let's draw a simple comparison to an average human. When placed beside one, the helicopter appears remarkably large. Now let's delve into a more detailed comparison with its counterparts. We'll start with the renowned Russian Ka-52 helicopter, followed by the formidable Super Cobra attack helicopter and the versatile Bell utility helicopter. Upon examining these helicopters side by side, it becomes evident that while the Apache boasts a significantly larger overall size, the Ka-52 stands out for its towering height attributable to its twin rotors. We make original videos from scratch, so please do subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.